Hello, in this video we are going to see the card transform Shopify function. This is a function that let us modify the customer's card as they add or remove products to it directly on Shopify's backend, so the changes we do there will propagate across the whole buyer's journey, from the store's front end to the checkout and thank you page. With this function we are able to do things like dynamic bundles or updating some parts of the product's information after the user has added it to the card. So with that being said, let's get started. Now from VS Code I'm going to run npm init Shopify app latest to start a new app. I'm going to name this card transform app. Then I'm going to start by adding my first extension here. This will install the necessary dependencies. And I'll come back in a moment. With the app created, let's generate the extension now. So I'm going to take all of this out of here. I'm going to delete this folder. I'm going to run npm run Shopify app generate extension from here we are going to select the type of extension that we are generating i'm going to create this as a new app keep this name and here we are going to pick card transformer function i'm going to name this card transformer just like it just like this i'm going to keep the default and i'm going to use typescript for this we are going to install the dependencies, so I'll be right back. And with this, we have now in this extensions folder the default code for the extension in this run.ts file, which at the moment is doing no changes. Before running this, we are going to come here to shopify.app.toml and in the scopes, we are going to add write card transforms. As that's the scope that is needed, to run the card transform function. If you need to add any other scope, this is the place to do so. I'm going to leave in the description the link of all possible scopes because depending on what you're trying to do, you may need to add more values over here. And before going any further, let's make sure we have the GraphQL extension installed because in Shopify functions, we get the input that way. And Shopify has recently started generating this .graphqlrc.js file, which if you recall from previous videos in the channel was not there before. And this basically gives us how to complete in this run.graphql file, which is the file controlling the input of the function, if we have the appropriate extension installed. So here I'm going to look for GraphQL. And the one we want to install is this one from the GraphQL Foundation, which at the moment is not the first one showing, but this is the one we want. It will also install this GraphQL syntax highlighting extension. And once installed, if we click on this file, this is syntax highlighted. And also we get the autocomplete for the possible values or attributes that you can query for in this particular place like for example cost here it tells me that i must query an inner attribute of this and note that here we get the type and also a short description of what this value means so let's get amount and see how now i know that this query is valid you can still check this file for all the possible types and their descriptions which is where the data for the autocomplete is coming from. But well, now it is more convenient if you have the GraphQL extension installed. And now let's begin with the operations. As you can see here, a card transform function returns a list of card operations. There are three operations right now. First, we have the expand operation, which specifies the components of an item and can apply some price adjustments to it. So this one basically takes a single product in the card and expands it into a bundle. Then we have the merge operation, with it, we are going to take multiple products in the card and merge them together into a bundle. One of the possible uses for this is dynamic bundling, so basically letting the customer mix and match products together and then bundle their selection. Finally, we have the update operation over here, which let us update the title, price, or image of an item in the customer's card. This can be used when the customer customizes some products to show the customized item directly in the card. So let's begin with an example for the merge operation. So here I have a development store that was created with test data. And what you're going to do is divide the catalog into two groups. Then let the customer pick any product from group one and then bundle it together with any product from group two and offer a 10% discount on that bundle. In this, I'll create a segmentation between the products artificially by tagging some with group one and then some others with group two, as most products in this store are snowboards. But if this was, for example, a clothing store, you could do things like letting the customer pick any t-shirt and then any pair of pants and bundling that together. So what I'm going to do now is select the snowboards from this one up to this one. 
and click on bulk edit. Then I'm going to in the tags tab over here. If you don't have it, you can enable it. In the columns over here. I'm going to select them all. And at the top, I'm going to add group one. I click on save to add it to every product in this selection. And then I'll do the same for the remaining ones. But the tag will be group two. So I'll select all of this. And here I'll add group two. I click on save. Next, we are going to create the product that will serve as a container for this bundle, because in Shopify, a bundle is internally registered as a product. So when we are merging the items in the card transform function, we will need to specify a parent variant ID. And that ID is something we'll get from this product we are about to create. So here, I'm going to click on Add Product, and I'm just going to name this Bundle Container. I'm going to keep its inventory a zero so the so the customer cannot add it to the card unless we are adding it as a bundle through the function and to get the variant id because it only has the default variant so it doesn't show over here i'm going to add the json to this url and i'm going to copy this large json over here i'm going to paste this this code and i'm going to format it and the default variant is this one and i'm going to grab this id and paste it over here in run.ts because we are going to use this later in the video. Now I'm going to add the front-end code that will let the customer select the products they want to bundle together and then let the Shopify function know which products to put together because as you'll see later, the function always receives the whole customer's card as its input, so the products that should be bundled together need to be marked somehow. The way we'll approach this is by using line item properties. Basically, we'll add a bundle ID property to the items that should be bundled together. And from the Shopify function, if two line items share the same bundle ID, then we can assume they should be bundled together. Note that in this case, the front end is a liquid theme. So if you're using something different for your front end, like for example, hydrogen, the Shopify framework, then this step won't be exactly the same for you, but the general idea should be the same. So here I'm going to click on edit code, and we are going to add a section to handle this. Now I'm going to add a section, bundle builder with liquid. And from here I'm going to change the name to be bundle builder, the presets. I'm going to add one with the name bundle builder. This is so later I can add this section to this store from the, from the team editor. So now I'm going to create a form. The ID will be bundles form. And here I'm going to open a div. Over here I'm going to look through every product in the store. So for product in collections dot old dot products. I'm going to close this for loop. And over here I'm going to check if product dot tags contains group one. And if no. Before that, we add a label here, group one, and this will be for group one. And I also have to add a select. The ID will be group one, and the name will be group one too. I'm going to close the select over here, and now inside this if. I'm going to create a variable, assign variant will be product dot selected or first available variant. So I'm always going to select the first variant. If you were building this for a production store, you probably want something more robust than this, but I think that for this example, this will do. So here I'm going to display the product title and then the variant price i'm going to format this with money and then the value over here will be variant.id i'm going to save this and now i'm going to copy all of this and paste it below and just change all of these ones for a two
And now I'm going to add a submit button. The next thing we're going to do is add a script tag over here. And then I'm going to get the form with document.get element by ID. Bundles form. And then I'm going to add an event listener for submit. This will be asynchronous because we are going to call the Shopify API to submit the form, the selected products to the API. So group one will be document dot get element by ID group one. Then I'm going to assume that it will always have a value for group two. I'll do the same. And now the bundle ID, I'm going to quickly generate it by using the date and just getting the time. Then I'm going to do a fetch to card add the JS. The method is post the headers. We just need to add content type and set it to application JSON. And then the body will be json.stringify. I have to hear some of the items in some array. The ID will be the one that I got from group one. And the quantity will be one. And then in properties, this is what I'm going to use in the Shopify function to note that these two products shall be bundled together. I'm going to put bundle ID. And I'm going to do the same for group two, just making sure that I change this variable to be group two. Now I'm going to save. And I'm going to go to the store editor to get here. I just click on customize over here. And I'm going to add a section, bundle builder. I'm going to move this to the top, but you can already see that the products are being listed correctly here. And now if I go to the store and refresh this, I get my products. Now let's submit the form. And if I go to the card page, the card is empty. Let's see why that may be. And we have two issues here. The first one is that I need to add a prevent default. So the page doesn't refresh automatically as I submit the form. Also, I have a typo here. This I should be in uppercase. And also note that we are at this. Let's add window.location.reload. So after I make this request to add the card, the page is refreshed. So I'll save this. And if I refresh the page here and I click on submit, now the two items are in the card with their bundle ID. And now that we see that the bundle ID is working, let's hide this because this is an implementation detail and the customer doesn't need to see that. So what I'm going to do is add an underscore to the bundle ID, preface it with an underscore, and then this will be equal to bundle ID. I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to save. And I'm going to remove these two items from the cart. And now if I add again, go to my card. I don't see the bundle ID, but it is being stored just as a hidden attribute. We will read it later from the Shopify function. And after this lengthy setup, I'll clean the card and I'll go to the code over here. Let's update the query. This code over here, we don't need that. We are going to query for attribute. We are going to get the key and the value. And here we're going to specify the key. The key we want is bundle ID. Some other fact, we don't need a key here because we know that this will always be bundle ID and we can alias this to bundle ID. Now I'm going to open another console here and I'm going to go into extensions, hard transformer, and I'm going to run npm run type gen to update the typings in front of TS to match what I have here in front of the graph shell. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is delete this because I don't need these cons no changes. For now, let's return an empty array. And now let's create a constant group items 
This will be the items that will uh, that are grouped by their bundle ID. The type of this will be a record of a string and pick of a card line. And from the card line, I need the ID and the quantity. This will be an array. And this will start as an empty object. Now I'm going to do input dot card dot lines for each. And for each line item, I'm going to get the bundle ID. So this will be line dot bundle ID. And if it exists, because this is a property, it is optional. And if it has a value, then I'm going to enter here and if group items dot bundle ID dot value. So if there is if this bundle ID has not been registered over here, I'm going to register it. Group items bundle ID dot value will be equal to an empty array at first. And then I'm always going to push to this. This line item. Now over here, I'm going to return operations, and operations is an array. And from here, I'm going to have object that values, group items that map, group. And I'm going to have here merge operation. This will be equal to a car operation. And here, I'm going to use a merge. Cut lines will be equal to group dot map, and I'm going to get here the line, and I'm going to return card line ID will be line dot ID, and quantity will be line dot quantity, and I also have to specify a parent variant ID, and that is what we got earlier in the video. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it over here. Then I'm going to return merge operation in the line below we have no errors over here so i'm going to save this and let's see if this is working by running npm from dev this will take a moment the first time we run it but it will ask us in which store i want to install this card transform store is the one that i'm using Then we're here, let's see what we got. We got a preview link. So I'm going to click, press a P. And this will ask me to install the function in the store, which I'll do. Now, this is not enough to enable it. Now I have to go into GraphQL and run a query to actually enable this function in the store. So I'm going to press G because now GraphQL comes built in to Shopify CLI and let's build the query. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get the function ID for this. I'm going to delete everything here and I'm going to get Shopify functions. The first, I'm going to get the first time, but you can get the first any if you don't get the one that you created right away. And here I'm going to get the ID and the title to know which function I have. Over here, I just have a single function, so the ID is this one. I'm going to copy all of this, and I'm going to put it over here as a comment, because I'll need it. And now, I'm going to run a mutation, which is card transform create. The function ID is this over here. So let me copy and paste it over here. And then, I can get the, the, the ID of the card transform and user errors in case we have an error when doing this. So I'm going to run this as it's denied. So it seems like the right card transform scope we have over here hasn't been updated. So what I'll do, if you get this error, even if you have it over here, what you have to do is run npm run deploy. By deploying this, Shopify will update the scopes. So let's see. Over here, you can see that it will release a new version of this app. So it is building it.
and the access scopes got updated, as you can see. So now if I run npm run dev, and now over here, if I press P again, I will be prompted to update the data access over here, so you now can access card transforms. And the app has been installed, and now I can go to GraphQL again by pressing G. Limitation got saved, so if I run this again, now I don't have an error, and I get the ID of my card transform. So it should be working in the store. Let's go over here. And let's click on submit here. And I get a single item this time. And it is bundled container with my two items combined. So this seems to be working. How do I know that my two items are combined? Well, I can see here the price. But also, if I go to checkout, I see here bundle container and my two items are bundled together. So the function is definitely working. Now we can add a couple more things here. First, we can add a discount. So you can see that this is the price right now. But let's say that we want to add a 10% discount. To do so, I'm going to add here price, percentage decrease, and I'm going to decrease this by 10%. If I save this, I refresh the page. Okay, it seems like I have to add it again, so let's delete it from the card. Let's add it again. And you can see here that the price is 10% lower than it was before. If I go to checkout, I get the reduced price. We can also change the title. That's why I said earlier in the video that the title we gave to the product was not that important because we can change it dynamically from here from the function. So let's say my customized bundle. I'm going to save this. I'm going to remove this from the cart. And I'm going to submit again. And if I go to checkout, I see my customized bundle, but over here, it doesn't show like that. And the reason for this is because this custom title that we gave it is in a different property in Liquid, so we have to change some Liquid to get that. Let's see how to quickly do that. So here from the editor, I'm going to look for main card items over here, and I'm going to look here for item.product.title. This is what is rendering this title over here. However, the custom bundle title is inside of item.title. So if I save this and refresh this page, you're going to see my customized bundle over here. Now, we don't always want to use this item.title, so we are going to render this based of an if statement. So let me put this in a new line. And I'm going to check if item dot, and for this I'm going to use the item components property. So basically, bundle items will list its components under item components. So if item dot item components dot size is greater than zero, then we are going to use item.title. Else, we are going to use what we were using before. I'm going to save this, and now, if I refresh this, I see my customized bundle, but if I add a regular product to the card, such as this one, I see here its regular title. And I can go to checkout, and everything works fine. And now that we saw the item components property, we can replicate something like this if we wanted to, because we have access to every item in the bundle. So if we wanted to indicate which items are inside a bundle, we can do so from the card page over here. So let's quickly do something like that. So let's say for a for component in item dot item components. And I'm going to put this inside a list, a list item, component, the title. And let's wrap this inside an another list. And 
and I'm going to render this list only if this is if this is true if the item component size is greater than zero let me save this and let me format I'm sure the button actually worked but anyways let's refresh the page over here and I see here the two items that are inside this window I could also show their image or anything else that I want as this is just a regular line item object so any property accessible from line item will be accessible from the item component we can also add a custom image so for this I'm going to say image URL and here I'm going to paste a URL for an image which I'll get from Shopify I'm going to use this one for example and I'll paste it over here and if I save this and go to the store if I refresh this I see no changes but if I go to checkout my new image is there and at the moment I think this is a bug because I can't see the image over here when I'm in the store but if I go to checkout it shows up over there I checked the line item properties and I don't see a new property that has the image as of now so over here in the card what you will get is the parent product image which in this case is empty but we can populate it with something else from the admin let's do that so from the admin here I'm just going to grab this URL copy it and go to the bundle container and add from URL here and paste that URL and now after this finishes processing I'm going to save this Okay, seems like I don't need to save it and if I refresh this I can see this image in checkout I still see my custom image but let's remove it here because then we will have an inconsistent image experience over here with checkout having this image and the card having a different one so if I refresh this I get the image for the parent product now I don't think this is a deal breaker which is why I decided to make the video despite it as in most situations when you are letting the customer mix and match products together you don't have a pre-rendered image of every single combination so usually the bundle image is a more generic one and then when the bundle is expanded the customer can see what items are actually included and by expanded I mean for example here in the checkout page I can expand the bundle to see the items with their image and I showed you earlier in the video how you could create a similar experience in the card page if you needed to Nonetheless, if in the future this gets fixed or I discover a way of showing the customized image in the card, I'll update the description or add a pinned comment in the video with that update. And also, if you know a way around it, please share it out in the comments to help future watchers of this video. And the last thing I'll show you about the merge operation is an actual limitation of the image property, and it is that if we try to use an image that is not in a Shopify CDN URL, such as this one from Wikipedia, I just copied the URL for this generic JavaScript code, and if I try using this as the image of the bundle, I will get an error. So if I refresh this, let's give it a second. There we go. So the bundle is no longer showing. And if we go to the console, we will see an error. And let me take this as an opportunity to show you how to see errors. So from Shopify Partners, you can click on All Apps, find the app that has your function. In this case, it's this one. And then in extensions, I click on Car Transformer, and here I see this invalid output error. If I click on this, I'm going to see that the base image URL must be either cdn.shopify.com or cdn.shopifycdn.net. So basically, you need to host your images in Shopify for them to be able to be used with this Shopify function so let's quickly undo this and now if i go back here and refresh this page my bundle is showing and if i refresh here i can see that these executions have a success status and also note how over here they input has these three line items but if i go to the store the card shows 
as if it only has two. And that is because the card that we get here is actually the card after it has been processed over here. So each time we update the card, it will be processed over here in the Shopify function, and then we will get the value here. So let's add another bundle here. You can see it is working. They both have different prices. And if I go to checkout, each time I go to checkout and I refresh the page, also another execution of my Shopify function happens. So let me go back here. The last execution is this one. But if I refresh this page, note how the last execution now is this one, which happened a couple of seconds after. If you wanted to use console.logs, this is also the place where you will see that output. So here, I'm going to do console.log, testing, console.log, and if I set this, then I go to checkout and refresh this page, and then refresh the partner's dashboard. Over here, this last execution should have a console.log here at the bottom, testing console.log. Now let's see the next operation, which is the expand operation. What this one let us do is take a single line item and expand it into a bundle. One of the uses for this one could be if you wanted to give the customer an item when they purchase another. For example, in the snowboard store, I can give the customer a free ski wax when they are purchasing a snowboard. So you can see here in the catalog for this store that I have these ski wax over here, and I can give one of these to the customer for free when they are purchasing any snowboard. So I'm going to start by grabbing the bargain ID here. I'm going to take this one. And I'm just going to copy this one over here and copy this part. Now, I need to update the run query over here because I need more information. So merchandise on product variant, I need to get the variant ID. Also for later, let's get the product and the title. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to run npm run type yan to get the updated, updated typings over here. I'm going to remove this console.log. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to filter the items that don't have a bundle ID attached to them. Because even though a card transform function can return multiple operations, multiple operations targeting the same line item usually are not recommended. You'll see why in a moment. So that point of not recommending multiple operations targeting the same line item is because of this over here. You can see how Shopify will behave if multiple operations are targeting the same line item, depending on what those operations are. So if you have multiple expand operations, the first expand operation is executed and all the others are discarded. The same happens in the case of merge. The first one is executed and all the others are discarded. And if an expand and a merge operation are targeting the same card line item, the expand operation is executed and the merge operation is discarded. So to avoid collisions here, what we are going to do is we are going to filter the line items that don't have a bundle ID because for those ones, we are not executing the merge operation. So here I'll do comes items with no bundle ID will be equal to input the card the lines. And I'm going to filter this. So line.bundleid.value is equal to false. So I'm converting this to a Boolean. And then if this is falsy, then I can assume that it doesn't have a bundle ID. Now over here, what I'm going to do next is map this. So items with not with no bundle id dot map item and i'm going to have here expand operation this will be a card operation and here i'll say expand card line id will be item dot id expanded card items here we have to specify 
which to which items we are expanding this. So item dot merchandise. I'm going to cast this as a product variant and get the ID and the quantity. We should actually query here also for the quantity. So let's get that. Oh, we are pretty genuine. That's better. So item dot quantity. And we should do the same here, merchandise ID. This is where we are going to copy this ID. We got it in a moment. We got a moment ago. And the quantity will be item the quantity. And then I'm going to return the expand operation. So what I'm doing here is this line this line item. I'm going to expand it into the product it already has, and I'm also going to add these as keywords. This is the variant ID for this keywords, and I'm going to replicate the same quantity. So if I have a single item, I'm going to be adding just a single as keywords. If I have to, I'm going to be adding two. So by saving this and by refreshing here in the store, you can see that I already have a snowboard that is not bundled with anything else. So this one doesn't have a bundle ID. If I refresh, we have an error. No, we don't have an error. That took a moment to be updated in Shopify's backend, but now you can see that we got it expanded and I have this selling plan skewax. And if you notice, the price didn't change because I'm not adjusting the price yet. So the customer is getting this for free. We can also here update a couple of properties with the same limitations we saw a moment ago for merge. So we have title, price, and image. Let's update the title. So I'm going to say item but merchandise I'm going to cast this to product variant and I'm going to get the product and the title and I'm going to say plus free as keywords and if I save this this will take a moment to refresh and here we have it plus free as keywords I can also go to the stores cart this will be refreshed here but if I remove this item Add it again. I can see here that I get plus free SKYs. We can also update the price if we wanted to. So let's say that we didn't want to give the customer this item for free, but just at a discount. So I'm going to go here to run the GraphQL. And I'm going to get, let's see, price was, was it here? Cost. Total amount, amount, it was over here, the price. And now I'm going to run npm from pipeline. And while this is generating, I'm going to up here price, adjustment, fixed price per unit, amount, and the amount here will be item of merchandise. See, item dot cost the total amount that amount. So we are going to be keeping this price the same way it is, but for this one, adjustment, fixed price per unit. And the reason I had to specify it over here, even though I'm keeping it the same, is, be is because if I specify it in, a, in one item in this array, I have to specify it for every other item in this array. So here the price, let's say that it will be. $10. If I save this, you can see that the price is this right now, but if I go to checkout, it has increased by $10. And just to mention, to, to keep this video shorter, I'm recording this IG and this price over here, but if you are doing this in a real app, you should be using an app meta field to get this data. We can query app meta fields from over here. And then you can do it. car transform meta field and over here you can get meta fields for this function and that way you can get data dynamically instead of having it hard coded as I'm doing right now. And lastly let's see the update operation. This is a very simple one that let us update the title, price and image of a line item. An example could be when a store offers custom engravings in some products. Once the customer has typed what they want to engrave, 
we can update the car item to show that in the title. And this one has this limitation over here, which if you are distributing this through the Shopify App Store, you should be aware of and handle appropriately. If a customer tries to use the update operation in a store that is not on Shopify Plus or a development store, they will get an invalid operation error. So make sure you handle those cases. To demo this, I'm just going to comment all of this out and I'm going to change the title of the first part line item. I'm commenting all of this so there are no collisions. As we saw a moment ago, Shopify doesn't like when two different operations target the same line item. So the, here I'm going to put a date. The card line ID will be input dot card lines zero dot ID. And the title, let's say it is input dot card lines zero merchandise. I'm going to cast this to product variant. I'm going to get product the title and I'm going to just add here update it. I'm going to save this and if I go to the checkout here and refresh this, all these bundles will be undone, but the first item over here should have updated as you can see here. And if you wanted to do something more realistic like the engravings example I mentioned a moment ago, you will just need to pass the engraving string as a property like we did with the bundle ID earlier in the video, then query it from the function and append it to the title. And to close the video, let me show you how orders processed by card transform functions look like in the orders tab. So I'm going to click pay now. Over here, we can see that updated is still showing. And now if I go to Shopify admin, so if I look here for updated, you can see that that string is no, nowhere to be found. And basically that change we did with the update operation was just cosmetic for the customer to see, but internally the product still has the name it was registered with. And now I uncommented the merge operation. We have the custom bundle over here. I'm going to click on pay now. And I'm going to go to the admin here. And in this order, we can see both products separately, but the parent product is not here. So this bundle container does not show in the order. Instead, we get the two products that are part of the bundle. And lastly, I have the expand operation with the free ski wax. So from the code here, I removed the part where I was making the price of the ski wax to be 10. Instead, it is now just free. So I'm going to order this. And in the order step, let's check what we get here. I get the two items, but this one appears to be at a discount. So the total in the end ends up being the original price of this one. So this one doesn't appear at zero. Instead, this item gets discounted the price of this item, if that makes sense. So the price here, you can see is this one, but the original price of this item is greater than that. It is the combined price that it has over here plus this one over here. I hope that makes sense. And that does it for this video. If you found it useful, remember to like and subscribe for more Shopify related content and I'll see you all in the next one.